experienced it well. I know you made your point. Again, be brief about it. We can pass to the next member of the community, and I hope all of us uh, really speak as faithfully today as we did previously, talking about your experiences. And if you have another point, we'll come around back to you as the, as the evening progresses. Uh, just because we have an hour doesn't necessarily mean we have to stay an hour. If everybody has said their piece, um, talked about the, the things that concern them, um, we'll be continuing to meet. But it's really important, I think, for all of us to really be faithful in our two responsibilities. To listen to members of those of us who are here, and also for the others to faithfully and verbally transcribe your experiences without finger pointing, without blame, without any of those things. Because I, I hope tonight will be productive. And the next time this group meets, I hope that what will come out of that session are several credible solutions or recommendations. I think all of you, excuse my voice, my, uh, anytime the wind kicks up, my asthma kicks in. So, um, I think all of you, if you're like me, when you leave a meeting like this, the last thing you want to do is leave without some ex expectation of something happening, right? Do you agree with me? Just kind of not do that. If I know you. Um, because it's our, our hope that within the next few weeks, we all agree to do something. Now, what that something is um, will come out of these discussions. And so, anybody have any questions or thoughts, um, issues, anything? That we can um, I would like to begin. Uh, my name is Yusuf Vazriel. Uh, no, no questions. But I'd like to kick it off with some. Uh, okay. Anybody have any questions? questions? Uh, my name is Yusuf Vazriel. I'd like to thank Captain Sands and the Vice Unit for stepping in and addressing our community concerns with the parties. Um, as a year round resident, I've been here for a while. Um, I'm very frustrated with the USC administration. Uh, we met with Student Affairs in 2016. February was a rainy night, and out of the 12 people I invited, 11 showed up. So here we are, three years later, we're still talking about the same issue. So I feel like as though USC administration, yeah, I feel like USC administration doesn't take the off-campus residents seriously, because if they did, in my opinion, I'm not accusing anyone, you would have reached out to us, because there's been times we, 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 we did this three years ago, and we reached out to certain individuals only to have our emails ignored. So three years, fast forward, 2019, I went before uh, Los Angeles Police Commissioners as well as Chief Moore asking for assistance because, in my opinion, USC, Department of Public Safety, is not doing enough. And so I'm going to leave it at that and just pass it over to the next person. Well, uh, first and foremost, um, I'd like to thank each and every one of you for taking the time out of your busy schedules just to hear what we have to say. Um, that being said, us on the community side of things were very much so on the outside looking in. So I was hoping to gain some aspect of clarity in terms of, you know, once you guys are notified of a party, of an incident taking place, what is the typical response protocol? What is that SOP, if you don't mind, just to shed some light on it? Anyone can jump in with that. Well, before, why don't we hold the questions for them to the end? What I'd like to do is kind of give the benefit of what your experience has been. Uh, with okay. Be more than happy to ask okay. Um, well, I mean, that being said, um, it's it's funny with the whole party situation. A lot of us think that this is happening in the middle of the night, midnight plus anything like that. Um, as I mentioned, we've owned multiple properties in, in, in the neighborhood. That being said, um, one afternoon, I'm sitting on my front porch. Um, this was like middle day, maybe two, three in the afternoon. Um, students next door are drinking, music going on, you know. I get it, college, go have fun. Um, next thing I know, one of these students is streaking down the street completely naked. Now, my understanding is that you guys have two ambassadors on each block. You guys have maybe six cameras on our street. Regular DPS patrols. This man ran down the block and back. We have families, we have young children that live on this street. How many officers responded? None. 
So I'm really troubled as a member of this community that is invested in this community to understand how we have one of the largest college police forces in the nation, and that happens. So I was hoping to have some light shed on incidents like that, because this is not just Friday, Saturday, Thursday night. This is middle of the day when kids are coming to and from school playing in their front yards. Yeah, we'll come back to your question. Thank you. Very nice to meet Oh, I'm up? Okay. Uh, my name is Tom Floyo. I've been in the neighborhood for 30 years. This is uh, the Ribbon 8.8, I guess. Uh, every couple of years, we get a team like this together. We get promise from the community, from LAPD, from City of Los Angeles, that we will enforce the law. Uh, basically, what I hope that this meeting will uh, address is, is the parking <coughs> issue, which has been a problem from the day I got here. It used to be gangbangers and, uh, and students, and now uh, LAPD has found ways of suppressing the community, young community, but not the students. Uh, the problem is that the education process happens every semester. There's a big new turnover, and USC has failed. No matter how many times I've cried out that we need to educate students at not only show what a pretty campus is at orientation, but that they live in the city of three million people. This is not the middle of a cornfield of the university somewhere where they don't have to respect the community. Now, up here in North University Park, we had had a lot of success with the help of the SB and LAPD. We have had success, but it took me being out there at three o'clock in the morning, at two o'clock in the morning, and taking knuckleheads and hanging them up on fences like and waiting for LAPD in the old days for three hours. Luckily, that doesn't happen anymore, but we still don't get adequate response. Um, I just, I just want to. Bring that to one point. I meant to have a handout tonight, but I didn't. But but the penal code 415 is disturbing the peace. I don't know why it takes a meeting of this for a hundred people to show up to demand that the law is enforced. Any one individual should be able to make a complaint and have LAPD respond or PSP with their assistance to respond to a simple complaint of noise. Uh, and as the gentleman said, this doesn't just happen in the evening. This happens day in and day out. My particular issue now, luckily, I have made it very clear to every student. Every student knows who I am. And nobody fools with me. And I'm not saying that <coughs> as, as bragging. I'm just saying that that's what it took. It shouldn't have taken that much. It should not have taken me being out there acting as a police officer. We don't have uh, peace officers. We don't have justice in the peace here like in some states. So it, it, it lands on, 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 the, on police officials who'd rather be dealing with gangbangers and drug dealers and, and all kinds of violent crimes so that they get their names in the paper. Great. You guys are doing a great job. However, quality of life issues are what the real community needs on a daily basis. Noise issues, it's not just parties. It's traffic. It's audible, it's, it's uh, I don't know what happened, why we stopped enforcing uh, loud muffler laws. Ten years ago, I would never deal with muffler as I'm sitting in my house. Now every five minutes, there's somebody going by with a modified muffler. CHP goes by, LAPD goes by, nobody does a thing about it. I complain and complain, it doesn't do any good. Loud music, people play music. That we have we have a traffic jam going up 23rd Street every every morning and every evening. Everybody got their stereo blasting way loud. Now again, so I hope that that we can come together in a meeting of not just the party, which is our problem, which I think should take priority. But I don't see why we can't cover all the noise <coughs> issues, all the quality of life issues that are we are dealing with in this community because we are a city of three million people. Always 
said on, on just the one block that I live on, um, retirees, um, working class, I mean, working in penal families, um, we've got a couple of uh, Section 8 housing projects, we have graduate students, some of, with families and children, some without. Uh, we have, um, it's, a, it's an eclectic neighborhood with a large number of students, but also long-time community residents. And then maybe five, six, seven years ago, um, groups of students started moving in and renting out entire houses, fraternities, sororities, and they parking a lot. And typically, <coughs> when there is a loud party on a Thursday or Friday or Saturday, pattern is you place a call to DPS and we wait and half an hour later, half an hour or an hour later I'll call DPS and I'll ask what's the status of that call and I'll be told oh officers went there half an hour ago and, uh, and the students complied. <coughs> well, <coughs> they're still making noise. So I tell them well, <coughs> they're still making as they ever were. All right, we'll send the officers back out. And then I call half an hour or an hour later. And the same thing happens. Eventually, the party gets shut down. Sometimes it takes a couple of calls. Um, uh, sometimes this goes on and on and on. And I even quote Chief Thomas up once at the two o'clock in the morning to ask him to get a party across the street shut down. That, that, I've only done that once, but that, that works. There apparently is one party team from DPS that goes around. And the students know that um, if they say, oh, we're sorry, officer, we didn't realize we were making so much noise, we should go, you know, we should leave town, that then they can get another hour of party out, uh, out of it before, at least, before they have to the party out and move to another house where it starts all over again. <laughs> now, Obviously, this is distressing because sometimes we have to get up early. Sometimes our neighbors have barely kept us up until 2.30 or 3.30 in the morning. Um, then start again at 7.30 or 8 the next morning in the hall. So our sleep schedule is, <coughs> is tailored to theirs. Several years ago, I, I overheard an altercation between young USC student, Brian Crossway, who was coming home with a couple of buddies who was at one club about two o'clock in the morning, um, drunk, spoiling for a fight. For the previous several few months, <coughs> three nights a week, um, a small group of students would walk down 28th Street, setting off all the car alarms they could, banging all the metal gates they could. And on this night, Brian Cross slammed the metal gate to one of those housing projects. And a young man trading for who was visiting his grandmother um, came out to remonstrate with this drunk <coughs> USC student who then spent, and, and there, <coughs> there were words and shouting back and forth and <coughs> trading forth, deciding to go back into his house. Brian Cross spent the next 10 minutes standing out in the street yelling and trading for it. And he eventually succeeded in provoking Trading Ford and Brian Cross was killed. <clears throat> and Trading Ford was convicted of murder in the second degree. His child was born while he was in jail awaiting trial. And <clears throat> it's not just it's not just neighbors, but it's not just the community residents who are um, Losing sleep night after night that, that's at stake here. It's only a matter of the neighborhood was quieter then than it is now. The noise has gotten worse. And I fear it's only a matter of time before something like that happens again if, if uh, the students don't, some of the students, it's not all, it's only a small number of students. I remember one, one uh, in my house, there are. Uh, We had final exam one year at Friday morning at 8 o'clock. And the 
party for the day. She said she had this is the wine night of the year. So it, it, it has consequences for the students too. Oh, ma'am, you had a Oh, yes. <clears throat> Just wanted to, um, my concern. Could you speak up? <clears throat> I'm sorry, I have a cold, so. <clears throat> My concerns um, living in the community with the problems that everyone here has, has addressed, I agree with every single one. I've experienced pretty much every single thing. The speaking <coughs> is a problem. I have two young children, like Justin stated. That has happened over and over again. The racial profiling is a problem. The harassment of the community members who live here is a problem. Thank you. Um, we've experienced that. My family has experienced that firsthand. Uh, the loud noise, again, calling and calling and calling. We have to be up through the night, calling and calling. Our children are awakened through the night. Um, there have been couches lit on fire in the middle of my block, right in front of my house, by students. Uh, they are destructive. They tear down signs off of their own property. They break glass bottles. The muffler situation, I have this Ferrari, or I don't know what kind of car it is, it's a sports vehicle. Constantly, every morning, every night, whenever they feel like it. They rev it up, rev it up, rev it up, rev it up. It's like they just want everybody to know, hey, I'm here with my Ferrari. Uh, you know, it's, it's, just, it's just become a huge problem. Um, I, I don't, I agree with this gentleman, why we have to continue to do this over and over and over and over is really a headache. I mean, it's, it's wrong. We should not have to fight for our right as citizens to live in peace in our home. That's all. Uh, um, I'll touch on some things. I mean, <clears throat> it, it's, it's not just parties where it's just a loud stereo or, you know, a DJ. There's live bands. I mean, they build a stage and everything, and it's a huge, like, live band, and they're on the microphone, they're screaming and yelling. And... and even when DPS is successful, you know, you call a couple of times and they come out, and you know, the first time they'll tell them to quiet it down or whatever, uh, they'll come out again, and then finally until they're tired of us calling, they'll, they'll shut it down. But see, there, the, there's also a problem with the street. You, you know, I already know when there's a, a, a huge party going to start because I start seeing Uber cars filling up the whole neighborhood. And the whole neighborhood is just like there's cars stalling right there. And I, I live on Menlo. It's, it's a small street. It's always empty. And now it's not empty. It's just traffic. People are honking, gang, gang, you know, trying to get through and whatnot. And then when they, the party is successfully shut down, it takes them about another hour and a half for, for it to, to, to finally end because <clears throat> now DPS has to, like, escort. Come on, keep it moving, keep it moving. And the whole street becomes like Main Street on Disneyland. You know, when you first enter the park, it's all crowded with people walking. The whole street, and they're drunk, and they're upset, and they're hanging around on, fit, on your fences and whatnot. It, it, that whole process, just to end, that, that takes another hour and a half. And it's, it's really annoying. And a lot of these students, too, they, they, they have an obnoxious attitude, like, hey, you know, like they're entitled to this. Uh, they keep, you know, one of the most common uh, responses was, this is a college town. And, and uh, you know, that's, that's inaccurate. This is a residential street. And, you know, and, and they, they feel, well, I live here too. I'm like, no, you're, 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 you're here temporarily. I live here. You're just dwelling right now. You're not entitled to anything. You don't care. You don't do this at your parents' house. You do this here where I live. And it's really frustrating. And, you know, and, and I don't... You know, and I, I, I don't like, you know, get, it's just such an obnoxious attitude. They're, they're entitled. I've had people calling me, telling me that they're law students and they're entitled to this, they're entitled to that, uh, you know, and, and that I should just take it because, you know what, you know, this is not going to end because even if we move out, another group will come in, 
And you know, it's 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 crazy. You know, and another thing, I'll touch out, and I'll, I'm going to end it right there. Um, I called DPS on one time, and there was a party, huge party across the street. I think there, there were you know, musicians and whatnot. And I call, and I'm like, hey, you know, there's a party going on, and so and so address. They're like, oh yeah, yeah, that's a registered party. And I'm like, register? What do you mean? What does that mean? Register? Yeah, yeah, they they register with us. And I'm like, so you know, so now they didn't want to dispatch any officers out because the party is registered. I'm like. You know, I do understand that USC does own a lot of properties around the area, but you don't own a residential street. You don't have any authority to, to register a party uh, under what guise that works, I don't understand. You know, and that's really frustrating. Uh, I, you, know, I did, you know, I did call, I spoke with him. I'm like, I can't believe I just called the EPS, and, and he spoke to a watch commander, and it kind of resolved it after that. Uh, but, it, you know, it's situations like this where it's really frustrating. You know, and there's a sense of entitlement with these students, and, and it's really frustrating. Okay.
because he didn't have a light, and DPS is telling him, yeah, we can call your parole officer about this, like, we, like, oh, he just didn't have a light, why was he handcuffed? Like, that, that just, there's a disparity in the way that, that the community is treated, particularly the lower income residents who are, are um, or monolingual Spanish speakers, who are not likely necessarily to come to a meeting like this, um, as good as you all are to, to have it. Um, and so that, and then I also had reached out to you because uh, I sent a message from friends on November 20th about four black youth up against the fence, um, being held up against the fence at Expo and Crenshaw by DPS officers. And, and there were three or four multiple DPS vehicles there and I'm getting panic messages like, why, are, why is DPS over at Crenshaw? Um, for which I, I did not have an answer. And so, um, so the question I guess that I have is, since I'm, I'm trying to ascertain what has changed in those six years, and going door to door talking to folks again. Um, but I'm, I'm also wondering, I know that like if, if you officers are here in this meeting, it's because you care. It's, it's sometimes it's not the ones that come to the meetings that are the, the issue, it's the folks that are maybe not so attentive to that. And so how do we, how do we, what, what kind of infrastructure can be put in place to ensure that the good intentions I know are within the folks at the top make it down to the street? Because that, for me, is a real um, challenge. And, and to have kids say to me, like, I just feel like this isn't, like, I, I grew up next to the and I feel like it's, I'm being told it's not for me, like, I don't belong here. That's really heartbreaking. <coughs> so that's very long-winded, so sorry to take up some um, okay. So the question is like, now what? I just have one more point. It reminded me. Um, uh, registered parties or parties that are black parties or anyway seems to be a lack of communication within LAPD with that means. We, I had to spend over 40 hours of my own time negotiating with the Shrine Auditorium because they had a permanent party, they had a party that had permits. Now, permits does not mean that every other law and books are wiped out. The noise ordinances, ordinances are still in effect. The, the drinking in, the, in public is still in effect. We have 12 or 15 officers sitting around one of these events, whether it's a USC event, whether it's a Shrine Auditorium event, whether it's an exposition park, or if it's, if it's down at the uh, convention center. And the police are all sitting around, and they're telling me, well, we can't do anything. There's 15, 20 police officers. Well, we can't do anything. The law's being broken, but they have a permit. They don't have a permit to violate my rights and my neighbor's rights. They don't have a permit to do whatever they please. There are still noise ordinance levels that they are supposed to abide by, but when these permits are issued, which are only uh, safety issues, the fire department permits, that's all they are. They simply say, yes, you have enough room here to have a party. But there's no monitoring of how loud is that music. And these professionals come in with 10,000 watt power amplifiers I can hear the Coliseum when they're having a party at my house on 23rd Street. So it's not just the students, but I do want, I don't want to get too far off track, but I want to make a point that it is about noise, all noise. I have a right to be left alone in my own house. Constitutionally, I have a right to be left alone, not to be disturbed. And somehow, since I've lived in Los Angeles, that right has gone out the window. I've had to fight gangbangers, I've had to fight USC students, I've had to fight administrations. It shouldn't be that way. And I do appreciate all you folks showing up today and saying, let's do something new about it. I really do appreciate that, because I know we can make it. And I appreciate Joseph putting this all together, because I'm running out of energy, I'm getting old. We need the new generation to start paying attention to this, and all these folks that are coming in but this is the third or fourth generation that's been complaining about the same exact thing. So we hope that we can find some, 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 some ground here. I don't expect, I don't think anybody expects politicians to be angels. Just respectful. 
And, and just real quickly, I wanted to jump in since uh, some of the racial disparities that we see in our neighborhood were brought to the surface. Appreciate you, two of you for that. Um, as a young man that grew up in this neighborhood, I've definitely had to deal with the you know DPS coming around asking questions. Um, just two super quick incidents. Um, one incident in particular, I'm in my backyard. Um, I was back home from college. I hadn't you know been around, been seen in the in the neighborhood uh, um, recently. Um, next thing I know, um, two DPS officers are coming into our private backyard asking me for my ID. Um, at the time, DPS had just recently changed their uniforms from the, from the brown and, and, and olive bottoms you guys used to wear to uniforms that look more like LAPD uniforms. So to the untrained eye, if you're not in this neighborhood, I'm talking to two LAPD, LAPD officers. So that was one incident that occurred. Um, another incident that happened more recently was um, a sign went up on a, on a neighbor's fence after a party. No black people allowed. It was a cardboard sign that was put up on my neighbor's fence. Now, um, I wasn't aware of the incident you know, when it took place, anything like that. Um, I went back and read a news article um, about it um, in the tab where DPS was you know, asked about the incident, what happened, and they said that we're not gonna give out a name of the student, or I mean, name of the individual, uh, a non-student, who did it because you know, we don't wanna have any backlash to their identity, but it was a black neighbor not associated with the university. So what that tells me is that while you're hesitant to identify one single individual, you have no problem casting people that look just like me in my neighborhood in a negative light. So the response to that, the Wall Street Journal showed up at my front door with a full camera crew asking questions about the incident. Reason being, some Russian Facebook group during the 2016 election got a hold of it and ran with it. So now I'm being bombarded with questions. Well, did you do it? Did you know about it? What's going on? I had not the slightest inkling this took place. So now, of course, I'm not looking like, you know, the most innocent person in the world because, oh, are you trying to hide something? What's, what's going on here? So again, just real briefly, I, I know that we're here to focus on the noise complaints as well, but it's, uh, we can see that, you know, more work needs to be done. And lastly, I'd like to share that my father and I do a lot of volunteering with law enforcement. Um, we, uh, we both volunteer with Concerned Black Men, Los Angeles, a national nonprofit started by police officers in Philadelphia. Uh, we also work very closely with black police officers of, of Los Angeles as well. So we know what proper policing, good policing can really do for our communities. I just want to see more of it in North University Park. If I could just jump in. Oh, sure, go ahead. I could just jump in right quick. Okay, so I've been in this area over 30 years on a couple of properties here in North University Park. When I purchased property over in this area, USC would call USC security. Now, as my son just mentioned, you guys are dressing trying to look like LAPD. What jurisdiction do you guys have? Are you guys now sworn police officers like LAPD, where you can stop anyone on the street at any time, come on the private property, and ask for ID? If that's the case, don't you think the community should know that yes, USC security guards are now sworn officers. We have the right to know that. And again, as long as I'm concerned, as far as I'm concerned, you guys are security. That's all. You're USC security guard. Not sworn police officers. Uh, a couple of things. Um, USC is operating under a uh, memorandum of understanding. The, the new one's being drafted and hasn't been finalized by the city attorney's office. But to my understanding, reading the document, it does not give USC, which is a private police department, private police force, the authority to stop a moving vehicle. Absolutely, they do not have that authority. To my best of my knowledge, if I'm wrong, uh, Chief Thomas, speak up. But yet, you stop my, um, one of my neighbors, uh, Gustavo Perez, who happens to graduate, has a bachelor's of science, his wife, a nursing degree, you stopped him on his bike, bicycle. The state of California recognizes a vehicle, a bicycle as a vehicle. As far as I'm concerned, you don't have that authority to stop a vehicle. Where in that memorandum gives you that right? Was there a supplement I'm not aware of? I would like to see that document. And secondly, we have so many secondary fraternity sororities with secondary houses in the neighborhood. It's been going on over five years. 
And we met with Chief Thomas five years ago at the Hooper House. We had something we brought to your attention, the problems we're having here. But my concern with the USC administration is that it has not developed any policies to deal with the fraternity sororities that the secondary fraternity that were setting up in the neighborhood. And as of March uh, 29th of this year, there were 10 sorority frater fraternities mainly that were suspended. They are operating in the residential neighborhood and conducting business as usual. What policies do you have to monitor these students? Something has to be done. And secondly, I read a, a, a news article that says uh, uh, DPS was not re reporting certain crimes to LAPD. I was corrected on that by Captain Sands. Not one time, and I, br I brought this up five years ago, I said, on your daily logs, why aren't you noting the, the, the uh, nuisance crimes, the loud music? I think I must have called a hundred times on my own and my neighbors. And not once in your daily logs did you mention that. Because the point is this, if you had did that, I can assure you LAPD would have gotten involved and they would have rectified this five years ago. Okay, and that's how I see it now. Thank you. At first glance, it might seem like the only issues are the only issues that are related. You know, I wonder if when Brian Cross was standing out in the street yelling for 10 minutes for Travian Ford to come out and fight him, why didn't Travian Ford call cops and say, hey, here's this annoying drunk person out in the street keeping us away? Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, of course. I mean, to, to kick things off, like I mentioned, us in the community, we're on the outside very much so looking in. So to, you know, get any kind of understanding in terms of, like, standard operating procedures, okay, like when a call is made, what do you guys do? What is the response looking like? I mean, why do my neighbors have to call and call and call when my understanding was DPS was a, was a specialized unit designed solely around the university to handle university issues? So we all know college kids party. Hey, my time in, in college, I had my fun as well. I, we, you know, to a certain extent, we, we understand that. But if DPS is solely for the university, for these college students, why is there not something, you know, something more solidified or something more in place to speak just to the party issues? 
you know, and, and again, I, I know that, you know, uh, various different concerns were brought up, but, you know, on the parting side of things, the noise specifically, I, I would imagine something would have been drafted up day one. It, it, so, so, yeah. Yeah. And so, um, we, we care, God, I don't know, Chief Thomas or Chief Sam, or Chief almost. Or <laughs> Sam. Well, I want to speak to that point just briefly. And again, not excuses, just kind of a broad explanation of what policy might look like. If that's what you're looking for. Well, um, I mean, again, when my neighbors pick up the phone and call, <laughs> what happens? Uh, I'll start. Well, first, of, first, you know, um, thank everybody for, be, for being here. I'm glad to see the representation here because at times I have been just as frustrated. One of the things I've said to students repeatedly is you live in a community. USC has transitioned from being a commuter university to now it's a residential community where the majority of our students live in the neighborhood. And as I tell them all the time, your Thursday night party is just another night. Somebody's got to go to work. Someone has kids to go to school. It, and, and, and it's time, and I'm glad that student leadership is here. Because again, part of it is it's a shared responsibility. You know, It's not something that DPS and LAPD uh, can and can't success, successfully and effectively uh, come to a meaningful resolution because for the most part there's only so much that we can do. The reality for us is to answer your question specifically, what happens when that call is made? And it depends also where, where does the call get made to. If the call is made directly to Department of Public Safety, uh, there are some limitations as far as to what we can do. Our standard protocol is it goes into our dispatch and our officers respond to the location. And again, this whole notion of being a registered party, that only applies to university-owned property. We put that protocol in place to, at, for segments of the community that allows for some students that live in the neighborhood so that we're aware of those parties, because there's so many of them. But one of the things that happens is when that call is made to our Department of Public Safety, an officer is assigned that call, they respond, and then there's a notification that's made. Or the officer has the discretion that as soon as they arrive, this is a determination that the officer can make independently of any notifications or warnings or anything. They can make a determination based upon the first time that they, that party needs to, to, to shut down or become in compliance with what are the community standards. And that is, at any time that somebody is calling a complaint, then it's somewhat a violation of the community standards if they're not willing to comply. So that's our protocol. Send an officer to the location to make contact with the individual throwing the party and take appropriate action. And that, that action can be anything like <coughs> shutting down the, the party, making notification, and then citing to student judicial. That's the authority that we have. We don't have the authority to write someone up for a noise violation as per LAMC, that's where we get LAPD involved, but we don't have the authority to write a citation in violation of the noise uh, ordinance. Now, we're working with the city attorney's office to give us some, some limited ability to do that, but that's our protocol. And uh, as far as LAPD, I'll let Captain Sands respond to what is their Pretty frequently, pretty frequently. But I, I can't speak to student affairs and student judicial. What is that protocol and how long does it take for uh, any specific repercussion? Um, I'll let Dr. Allen speak to that. But we, that's the teeth that we have when it's our students that we can cite them to student judicial. Um, we, Dr. Allen, we can come back to that. Let's hear from uh, Captain Sands and uh, following him. Maybe you kind of this broad view of what judicial, student judicial, student judicial is. Okay, as far as LAP is concerned, we pretty much have three uh, types of calls, non-coded, uh, code two call, and code three call, which lights and sirens. 
non-coded calls are pretty much what the allowed party would fall into for the most part. Uh, that's considered a low priority call for us. So depending upon the call load for that night, if we've got to, if we've got a lot of shootings, if we've got uh, four or five nines, if we've got aggravated assaults, those calls are going to take priority over the number of party calls, which I think everyone can confidently <coughs> see that. Uh, not to say that we won't go to that call at some point, but the time for us to respond to that is going to be a while. Now, I will tell you that sometimes during the summer months, um, some divisions have a, what's known as a party car, which uh, they work with the city council sometimes, so it gives them funding, and they'll allow us to uh, work overtime to address specifically party calls. Uh, party calls do uh, uptick during the summer months, and we understand that, so we're well aware of the frustration that you guys have. Um, what we've done now, um, I pretty much uh, redesigned or have a new strategy that we're using on USA. We've talked about this before, where we're now including uh, a lot of our vice officers are involved in these loud partying calls. We've seen some traction with that. Um, we've had a couple of incidents, and I've got my vice sergeant uh, here, um, where we've identified parties that were happening outside off the road. We've met with the students, <coughs> and we've actually had those parties move from those streets to a facility which was permitted or which was allowed to make a party. We actually moved them off out of the neighborhood off the street. So that's been very successful. So we're going to continue to do that in the neighborhood. I'm working with DPS and uh, working with my, my vice unit. And we're going to continue the education piece. Uh, I understand that at some point throughout the, uh, the year, the semester turns over and we get new students that come to those housings. So uh, one thing that uh, Officer Garner is thinking about working with DPS is that every turn, there's a turnover. We would have an education campaign you're off the road, you're in this neighborhood, these are the expectations that we're setting up for you as far as decorum, as far as loud party type of thing. If you don't follow those things, this is what's kind of our, our method of, of how we're going to do stuff. So that's going to be a continuing thing um, that uh, it seems to, be, seems to be working. And I think working with DPS, which we have been, um, um, I think we'll see a lot uh, more stuff come out of that. So that's kind of in a nutshell. Um, say, too long-winded as far as what we're doing as far as the last part of the calls for OPD. Dr. Ellison. Thank you. Um, yeah, thank you again, everyone, for sharing today um, and, and taking the time to share with us today. We really appreciate that. Um, some of you might be familiar, but just to give you a real general overview, we work really closely with DPS. Um, DPS, uh, we rely on DPS to keep us informed on activities in the neighborhood. Um, and unless I happen to be on the right along that, DPS regularly uh, and daily sends us reports of activities, interactions, responses, um, and also as a result of our, after our last two meetings with our uh, neighbors, uh, we have set up a practice where um, DPS is tracking the calls that come in on disturbances and disturbing behavior and reports the patterns to us and keeps us updated. Um, Liz has been doing that probably more recently, uh, but we keep a monitor uh, of patterns addresses and streets uh, where we can connect them with student names or we can connect them with student organizations is when we intervene. Uh, so we can either intervene through a student judicial process if there's a specific behavior or if we see there's repeated calls to a specific address, we'll reach out to the organization or the students. Um, the D we also rely on DPS to um, respond or circle back with some of the property management like we'll say it in the others to talk about a theme being uh, disturbances in the neighborhood and potential implications or consequences long term if this continues. Um, so this is, these are practices that we've changed up in the past two years since the last time we met to try to address the individual behavior um, as well as try to increase education. Officer Gardner is very helpful with us um, coming into um, uh, the organization houses to talk about the responsibility of being responsible neighbors. Um, and I do appreciate all this insight because this is very helpful for us to help um, I'd like to comment. I, I, I ask a follow up. Well, when a student is referred to to a student, to a student judicial, um, when when DPS cites a student to you for for excessive noise, um, what happens? How often? Um, I'm curious about what, what 
happens then and about how often students are actually punished, you know, punished um, for giving reward. Are there consequences? Because the impression I get is that there are no consequences for, for students when they, you know, the, 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 the greatest consequence is maybe their party gets shut down and they have to move to the next, move their partying somewhere else. Sure, but it, it's, again, it's expected that every person in the community is accessible to all. When there is a judicial issue that comes through the student judicial process, it is a process that was developed from a developmental perspective, meaning we want the individuals to learn from this experience. So it's not, I, I think, it wasn't built as a punitive model, but you do that or it's built as an educational model. So we will have any number of sanctions depending on what the <coughs> multiple issues of behavior than the uh, discipline or the discipline. The mm -hmm. sanction is probably more elevated, uh, but we start from a developmental place. I appreciate that the fact that you stated two years ago that you started tracking the number of problematic properties. Okay, 1358 West uh, 29th Street, this year, this last semester and this semester, I called six times, even complained to LAPD spoke to the property manager, met with the Slows, met with uh, Officer Calderon from DPS. So what, what you're saying sounds good, um, you know, sounds good intellectually, but in practice, it's not being done because 1358, most of Menlo Street between Adams and uh, 29th Street, between Vermont up to Orchard on 29th Street, these are party houses. These are secondary fraternities. So I appreciate what you're saying, but apparently, the left hand is not talking to the right hand because I have countless emails that would point that what you're saying is supposed to be implemented here. It's not being done. So something is, something's amiss here. You're saying one thing, but in practicality, from my experience and my neighbors here, it's not being done. It's not being done. We met three years ago, Dr. Albert, and here we are again. So whatever you're proposing, DPS is not listening to you, so we need to get some communication here because we have a problem, and I shouldn't have to call. Get, I shouldn't have to. I should not have had to go to LA, uh, the LAPD police commission and speak to Chief Moore personally and hand, hand off a private letter to him saying that we have a problem with DPS. I should not have had done that. Five years ago, when this problem was occurring, if you guys would issue these student judicial citations right off the bat, we would not be here because there's no deterrence. When DPS officers show up in one year, out the other. On game day, U U USC versus UCLA, 6.30 in the morning, the frat house had a, was blasting their music. 6.47, DPS shows up. The guys come out, they talk, and I'm just really upset, livid that they woke me up. And the DPS officers are, are laughing with the, with the frat, brother, frat brothers, laughing. And I sing this time and time again. My impression, you, you say one thing, but in practicality, it's not happening. And I have, I, I have the email to prove you wrong. Nothing personal, but your policies are not working. Okay? You're saying one thing, but in reality, I had to go to the chief, okay? Chief Moore. Okay? And I question that MOU because I don't think you guys are following it. You're, uh, that's my personal opinion. Okay? But thank you very much. It's nothing personal against you. I know there's policies. but. You guys are, are just not getting with the program. You're talk, all talk and no show. Thank you. I have two questions for whoever wants to take it on, on the table here. Uh, first, uh, reporting issues have always been a problem. If we have a problem property, can we get a report? If, if LAPD responds to it as uh, Yoshev's uh, article, that he distributed uh, pointed out, we can do a Freedom of Information Act and find out where the problem properties are. It doesn't seem that there's any effort to at least report to the community that <coughs> these are the problem properties. If you do that, we'll go after them personally. We can go after them with private nuisance. We can go after the landlord. That's what I did on my book until every single landlord had in their contract 
noise ordinance, noise uh, regulation as a breach of contract for their lease. And all of a sudden, students were paying attention. That's the only thing that I ever was able to get attention by. But having a left now, the USC facilitated that at one point. I don't know if that program is still there. Reaching out to landlords and explaining to them that these parties have a liability not only to the renter, but also the landlord. There are new alcohol laws on the books that say if you are charging money for alcohol, then you are liable for anybody leaving, just like if you were going to a bar. I had an ABC license for years, and I paid attention to what my customers were drinking and how it was drunk they were. So the first question is, what are the reporting methods to the community? I understand the private ABC issues of individuals, but there should be, I read it a Trojan every week, all of the crime blogs of, of where you, but I never see uh, how, how many parties have been responded to. I don't understand why that would violate any privacy issues. And second, uh, you know, what are we doing with landlords to hold them responsible for the business that they're operating that is causing a nuisance in our community? Uh, let me ask you, if anyone wants to respond to those two issues, well, I, I, I like that idea of making public because, it, you know, uh, we are a community. I don't have an issue with making public those locations that are chronically nuisance. Uh, that's something I can, I will look into. But I think that there are community standards, and I think that in an effort to be transparent, we should, we should make those things available. Um, and I don't have an issue with that. And, and I was liking that report, but you may Right there, um, in those reports, even if, if, if an officer goes out and determines that they responded and no, no action was taken, I would like to see that as part of the report also. We'll, we'll bring, we'll bring um, back a response to that question in a minute. <coughs> um, this question is for our uh, Deputy City Attorney, um, Michelle. Is USC Department of Public Safety, can they arbitrarily decide what to report and not to report on their daily crime logs? Because if you guys were to report on your daily crime logs, when we call you out for a party and we start seeing a pattern here over the months, then I as a resident can go to the landlord and say, look, we got a problem. Or I as a resident, we can collectively file a uh, small claims court actions against these landlords who seem to be absent-minded and are more concerned if they're making profit that's above the stock market. So what I'd like to see done here, and Chief Thomas, I, 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 I heard what you just said. Why don't you start today, every time you get a, a call for a party disturbance, you mark that on your daily logs and that creates a pattern. That way, when I have to go before the L.A. Police Commission and say, you know, deny this, patern this secondary fraternity house a uh, police permit that will allow them to have a party, I'll say no. And these are the reasons why. Because over the last nine months, these houses have been problematic. Case in Port Menlo, it's like the second row. These houses repeatedly are problematic. Repeatedly, year after year after year after year. I'm being melodramatic, but I'm telling the truth. And what does DPS go? DPS solution is to knock, and that's it. Go away. Come back three, uh, two or three times in one night, and then party shut down. Two weeks later, the same house is having a party. One following month, same issue. We find ourselves calling you guys constantly, 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 and it's always the same property year after year after year. Now, if LAPD was to receive these daily uh, logs that note that we have a problem with these certain party houses then they will get involved too. Let me say this, we do, we do tap, we do collect that information. The issue of making it public, that's a, that's a decision that I'm willing to, well, making the public is something I'm willing to do, but I don't operate outside the university. Those are things that the university has to grant permission. But we have the people in the room, and I, I'm, I'm gonna put this on student leadership. This is something that you guys, you know, you're sitting in this meeting with members of our community, and they're asking to make this kind of information public. That's something that I would need your assistance in, in facilitating. 
getting something like that more from it. Because I do think it's, it's, it's transparency, and I do think it's something that um, could be beneficial in helping to correct this, because again, once you begin to document chronic nuisance locations, and, and, and Lee, you know this as well as everybody else that was unique, once you start making documentation, and these things are documented, and they fall outside of the, the, the community standards, appropriate action can be taken based upon the level of it being a chronic nuisance in that community. So I'm willing to do that. I appreciate uh, it. I'm willing to support that, but I can't make that decision. Right. And I would like to uh, interject. It is not up to the USC administration what gets reported on your daily crime logs. It is what the memorandum of understanding states. Okay? That's to my understanding. Now, if I have to go back to the LA Police Commission and speak to Mike Fuhr, Attorney Mike Fuhr, Chief Moore, and to make this change with my neighbors, that's what's going to happen. But you have to report, you should be able to report everything that happens in this community. Just like if I was to call LAPD to file a complaint about a disrupted house, there's that digital phone record. And after 10 calls, correct me if I'm wrong, Captain Sands, after 10 calls, I think you're supposed to get involved. Is that correct? Or so many calls, and it just automatically says we got a problem. Right. So that's that's my point. Okay. And again, just real quick, I'll be succinct. The memorandum of understanding requires that we report things to LAPD. Right. Now, what LAPD chooses to report, independent of that, they they are the agents for the city of LA. Right. That's that's you know, and I don't have any issue with that. Right. And I don't see where Chief Moore would have an issue with that either. But again, that's something that I do think in an effort of being transparent and good community partner is something that could be effective. And I'm supportive of that. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate so, that. I think the only agency that we know have is the Los Angeles City Fire Department. Although I'm not sure that there's a need for them. Um, I really do appreciate um, the comments and the perspectives from the members of the community um, to suggest that you have a but I think I, 